Hello, New York people. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Alexander and Vicky, welcome to, this is the first sort of podcast I'm doing in regards to my work. And um, I'm sharing this with my clients because uh, not too long ago, I've had a few emails from my clients saying, why don't you explain a little bit about the science of the cars that you often sort of like advertise that I can do readings with. And around that same time, Alexander wrote to me, was like checking in because we had met each other about a year ago. And says like, how are you doing? What's going on with you? You still with the cards? And um, so it, that serendipity moment made me think, well, let's, let's open the door here. And you two have so much more experience than I do. And but at the same time, we interpret it differently in some levels because of our own individual experiences and our own individual background. So I'm so glad that you two are open to this particular opening session. And what we talked about too, is we hope that we could do maybe in another podcast, an actual live reading with mm -hmm. the three of us giving somebody a reading. That's like winning the lottery probably. <laughs> I'm not sure who that would be. Maybe I will put it out to my clients and they could uh, write to me and, and tell me they want to be that person. But um, so let's just start with uh, our introductions with Alexander and Vicky about how they came into the science of the cards or the card science. And and I'm sure they'll explain it in great terms and simplicity. And I turn it over to you two. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here chatting with you. I'm Alexander. It really is. Thank yeah. you so much for having us uh, do this. It's we love doing it, and it's really a pleasure. You are truly a pleasure. So it's a uh, it's a lot of fun too. So my I'm Vicky. Yeah, and, <laughs> and yes. Yeah, so um, gosh, it's it's a long story of my own spiritual seeking and journey, which I'll make short for us today. Um, I had a spiritual awakening, surprisingly, unexpectedly, when I was 17 years old, and that was the start of my whole spiritual quest. I had grown up Roman Catholic and nominally believing, kind of agnostic, forced to go to church. I went to Catholic school. But then when I had this experience when I was 17, it jolted me into the realization that there's something real behind all the religious dogma. And that started me on this quest, which I didn't necessarily even know it was a quest at the time. It's only in retrospect, of course, that we can sometimes interpret these things. I just knew that it set me yearning and seeking. And I went into evangelical Christianity. I became a born again Christian. I left that behind. I studied Roman Catholic theology, going back to my Roman Catholic roots. Meanwhile, I had studied philosophy at Harvard as well as an undergrad, looking for answers and the great thinkers of life. Um, I worked on corporate America for a while. I did that and experimented with every kind of psychedelic drug I could find, looking for answers there too. And then went to India as well. And then again, I'm making a long story very short. Uh, went to India. I was living and staying in ashrams there in the Osho Center, Sri Aurobindo Center. I took initiation as a Swami in India. I'd been meditating eight hours a day there and took the initiation there. Um, came back from India. Uh, so this is now I'm in my 30s. So from 17, I'm now in my 30s and still searching for answers. I was doing ayahuasca ceremonies. I became raw vegan for a while. I co-founded a holistic health center. I was going to music festivals like Burning Man and other places, still searching, seeking. And then casually one day, kind of uh, really unexpectedly out of the blue, I was at a party in Brooklyn and go Brooklyn. And somebody says to me, hey, what's your birthday? And I'm like, August 30th, why? And he's like, oh, you're born to play the nine of hearts and just introduce me to the real meaning of the playing cards in that moment. I was going through a divorce at that time. I just found out the day before that I was getting divorced. And the nine of hearts means tragic endings of the heart, and you got to let go and move on. And that's what he said to me. He's like, the nine of hearts, oh, you're probably having tragic endings of the heart in your life, and you're going to have to learn how to let go and move on. And it just really hit me in a powerful way that, oh my goodness, that is what's happening. And 
that's been my adventure in my whole life of seeking and searching for things that inspire my heart. So from there, again, another long story short, I started researching, studying, trying to find more bits and pieces about what these cards really mean. And eventually ended up writing my own book about it and starting my own practice to coach people and do readings and teach people about this ancient knowledge that was hidden in plain sight and making it my life's work that I want to give this back to other people. Um, so we started a nonprofit organization together so that we can do our best to share this with other people. And so thank you for having us on and thank you for being a part of the journey and participating in this collective mission of elevating humanity with this knowledge. So thank you. That's a, wow, that's a great short introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 20 years in five minutes. I love it. I don't think I want to do that one either, but uh, no, just coming, the, the serendipity of finding the cards. I can't even remember when I found them, but it was easily when I was in Asia, at least uh, 10, 12 years ago, 15 maybe. And I don't remember, I don't I remember I got the books and I just started studying on my own and just saw that it made a lot of sense. And it would, and even back then there was so many questions I had, but I didn't know that people were giving courses and this kind of thing. So it took me many years later, in fact, uh, that many more years to um, finally get certified. But I, I just found, I just find it ever, ever expands my, um, my my awareness of people and my helps me understand them in terms of relationships and yeah yeah maybe Vicky you could talk a little bit about your story and and how it, how it helps you with your yeah, with your absolutely. business so um, I've been on the path of healing for twenty five plus years and um, I I had a medical issue way back then that uh, for about six years that I couldn't resolve. And I ended up seeing an, an energy healer. And in a couple of days after having the session, my issue was completely resolved. So I spent the next all these years, like really diving deep into myself, growth, evolution, self-discovery, all these things about myself, learning to be my best self and let go of my fears and things like this over the over many 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 years i'm now an energy healer fast forward i meet uh fast forward from that time i meet alexander uh 10 years ago at a cafe and uh randomly like we're just like i'm sitting at a at a well <laughs> yeah, randomly <laughs> i'm sitting at a cafe in a ca uh, on a stool looking out the window and um he comes up to me and starts talking to me and he basically yeah, he asks me my date of birth and starts to tell me all about myself <laughs> in about 20 minutes that we had together at that time. Um, uh, all about me, like the good, the bad. I mean, you you name it, like everything about me. And I thought to myself, you just told me <laughs> in 20 minutes all the things I've been learning over the past 25 years about myself. And I was like, wow, that's really profound like that it is so deep this knowledge is so deep and accurate it's a really accurate template you know so as i started to learn more about my cards to play which we have um, a birth card which my birth card that's the primary energy that we are radiating in the world our light to shine and my birth card is the five of diamonds and the five of diamonds, you know, it's like really about being out of the box. So it helps me so much to be more out of the box, you know, because I've always been out of the box, but then like being confident in being out of the box. Well, wait a minute, I'm playing the five of diamonds. So I can be like as out of the box as I want, you know. Um, and also really it's about instincts. The diamonds are about anything that you can perceive with your five senses, the physical. So like the instincts of my body like it helped me to um really trust the guidance of my body like my body's really smart and so instead of like when I had the medical issue being angry at my body right for example like I can be like wow like honoring my body like my body like knows what's going on it's telling me something I have amazing gut instincts you know so it really helped me to hone in on my skills and activate like my power and be more confident in myself 
um, in many, many ways. I mean, that's just this, not even the surface really. There's just so much. It just, it's amazing. And and it's so, so fascinating. If I, if I may, I'll just jump in and say that. So my birth card is the nine of hearts. So I'm primarily operating through my heart. That's my optimal way to operate in life and to navigate through my feelings. And I was raised in a military minded kind of family, uh, that kind of mindset from my father. And I was always taught growing up that feelings are weakness. You don't show wow. your feelings. And, you know, God forbid you show your feelings as a man, you just don't do that. And so I was completely disconnected from and cut off from my feelings and accessing my feelings. I thought my feelings were weakness or a nuisance that would get in the way, which happened all too often playing the nine of hearts. And it took me a while, that first revelation that I mentioned at the party in Brooklyn. And then from there, the healing work of healing my own mindset and misperceptions and childhood twi getting twisted up in my mind and my heart to unravel all of that, to learn how to actually accept my emotional strength and my emotional gift and my empathy and my emotional sensitivity it's been so helpful i mean it's life-changing for me i have all the things i ever did and, and that's one reason why i like to tell this story because i really did try everything and read everything and it was this knowledge that unlocked something for me that none of those other systems or religions or spiritualities did and it unlocked yeah. me the ability to connect with what I'm truly here to do and what I'm truly gifted to do, which is my heart power, which is counterintuitive uh -huh. as a man in this society. But here I am with all this nine of hearts heart power. Yeah, and, and I can relate with you because I'm the eight of hearts. And just to share that when I discovered that I was and I, and, uh, I thought, you know, I've worked with children. I've worked with children since so long. Even when I was a teenager, the neighborhood kids would always come and want to play with me. And I had three other sisters and a brother, but they always wanted to play with me. And I always had this, just this natural ability to be around children, just from the heart, can be in their space. And I've been a director and writer and producer of children's theater for, you know, since the age of, uh, I think I opened my first business on that when I was 22. So the whole thing with the eight of hearts, when I discovered that it was a, a, a card that had a lot to do with emotional power. So not only did I know that I have this sort of power with my emotions, but how I can bring it and help other people bring up their own confidence through the way they speak and so forth, or the way they they connect in with their with their true self. And and true, and when sort of like with you, like kind of like a domino effect when I found out I was the eight of hearts, da da da. da I had all this backtrack going on because when I was younger too, in my 20s and in my 30s, and it happened today too, so I'll come to today's experience. I used to always find things that were heart-shaped, whether they, they were the rocks or the cloud you look up or the puddles or, you know, digging in the garden and you find a plastic heart. Well, this has happened like all my life. And when I when I got, when I found out I was Ada Hearts, it was like, oh, that's what the signs were back then. That's all. The angels were talking to me back then was through the, the symbol of the heart. And today I did a prayer before, you know, when I woke up, I did a prayer uh, talking to the angels or whatever. And I'm just cleaning up around my house on the outside. And um, I find this crystal pink heart. Now, I know it's in my collection, but how in the heck it got where it is? It's in my storage area on the ground by a garbage pan. Like I went, OK, thank you, angels. This is for today. I was super excited because not that I had remembered that or where I was not, wasn't looking for that crystal heart, but there it showed up today. Yeah. So the magic of the cards for me connected with signs and angels, it's all very, very profound. Like you had said, Vicki, and it's kind of like a never ending story in a way, isn't it? Well, well it, is. it is. And, and knowing the cards tunes us in as you mentioned, now you're more aware and yeah. you're able to be more aware of the signs and it tunes you into your angels more. It yeah. gives us that validation and confirmation to be more tuned in. Yeah, and, and also I think I shared before in, a, in another conversation we had, what I love about the cards, and I'm sure you two can comment on, is the practicality of it. Like there's a sense of 
well, if you know this is coming up, say, because I mean, we can go into the, the science part of 52 day cycles and different things. And you go, wow, that's coming up or I'm going to, it's connected with astrology. Oh, it's going to be in my Jupiter period. Oh, lots of expansion going to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to work this. I'm going to, that's oh. the time I'm going to advertise or that's the time I'm going to you know, reach out to friends that I needed to have some connection with. Yeah. That part is also pretty amazing for, for me. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's really utilizing the energy to benefit you in the best way possible, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when I give the readings to the clients, if I combine with the angel uh, combination, I feel like the angel stuff is very, very expanded, very, um, you know, it's visions, it's clarity, it's, it's, it's deep or uh, high intuition, but the cards kind of ground it because I can go, okay, this is the skill you can do now. This is the time frame you can do it in, and, you know, always a choice people always have you just give yeah. right like you guys yeah. do you give give and people pick what they want to to work on mm. yes that's absolutely right i mean the the practical guidance even as basic as if i'm playing a heart card as my primary card in life then all my decision making is best made through my heart how does yeah. it feel Whereas, for example, for Vicky, all her best decision making comes via her instinct, via her body, this kinesthetic, kinesiological knowing of her body. And it's been so important for me to know this because I used to be so much in my head, as, as most of us are, um, but very heady, very intellectual, and not then making my best decisions because I'm choosing based on what's rational or what's logical or weighing the pros and cons. And it really is for me, well, how do I feel about this? Do I feel good? Okay, yes. And that's like the emotional intelligence piece of, that we know, emotional quotient. But it's completely true for someone like you and I that that's our way to navigate. We decide based on our feelings. Yeah. And it's different. Some people have diamonds or spades, clubs. You have a different way to navigate. Would either one of you want to comment on the spade club energy and uh, just just for, you know, for those who are listening? <laughs> Spades uh, represent consciousness. All that is connection to spirituality. They also relate to work. Yeah. Working, right? <laughs> Hardworking. Hardworking yeah, people. people make, you know, play. My personality card is the Queen of Spades. The personality is um, how you know our light shines through our personality. They the two cards, the two cards work together, and the Queen of Hearts could get really. I mean, Spades, spades <laughs> could get really stuck in uh, wanting to be like work a lot you know, like overworking to exhaustion or having to have everything be perfect, you know. Um, so spades definitely can, you know, yeah, be overworking. Yeah, it's um the spade is an acorn. And the acorn is classically a symbol of the pineal gland or the third oh, eye. That's a nice symbology, yeah. Yeah, and the spade decision-making comes by envisioning it. You see it. Yeah. Manifestation. And yeah. where if you're not doing that, as Vicky mentioned, you can become a workaholic if you're playing a spade energy, if there's a disconnect between your vision and your imagination. So it's your own imagination and your own vision that would best drive your decisions if you have a spade yeah. energy. And in that, just that basic knowledge, if somebody knows that and it, it just will line up with, you know, yeah. would line up with their, uh, ability to to work in the world or to be in the world if they have that such basic knowledge and with the clubs because the clubs are how we a lot of how we think right how we just go forward like they're the perpetual students and I have a lot of club friends and it's like they're the ones that are always taking the notes and maybe being a bit over detailed at times and but you know you can rely on them if you if you need notes sure. right? Something like that. That's so basic, but when you know that in yourself, uh, I have a client I'm working with now who's at Asa Clubs, and and she when she's with me, she's young, and she, she's with me, she's like, like almost like her face is almost, you know, right there, <laughs> and they, like totally, oh, and then so she's so making lots friendly. of notes, and then she tells me how to send the notes to her, and when to send them, and right. so I love that 
energy of clubs? I mean, that's a simple way of putting it. Maybe you can add on to that. <laughs> well, one of um, my favorite things to do when I have a reading with a new client, especially if they are playing like the double club energy, their birth card and their personality card or planetary card, we can use the same terminology for the second card, which is the second most important card in our life path. If somebody, let's say they're born to play a six of clubs and their persona is the 10 of clubs. So they're all club in their primary ways of orienting themselves. I'll say to them, um, do you know what it means to be heart-based in your approach to life? And they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. And uh, especially in our world and our spiritual communities, the languaging that I often hear is be heart-based. You know, yeah. come from your heart. Right. And so I'll meet someone who's got all this club energy and I'll be like, well, do you know what that means? And like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> I'm like, well, that's okay. You don't have to know because your way is actually not through the heart. Your way yeah. is through your mind, through thinking, through intuition, through language, through knowledge. And it's such a relief to them yeah. that they're no longer struggling to be heart-based when they think that that's what they're supposed to be and actually, it's not for them to do that. Yeah, that's. I like that. I like how you put that together. Yeah, you know, I, I, you were sharing with me both of you that you created this amazing. Um, I think it's a, an app, right? The Daily Game. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm super excited. I'm going to be signing up by the end of today. Don't worry. But I'm always a last minute sort of thing too because I'm also Libra taking my time. But, um, right. yeah, the Daily Game sounds really like it's really well thought out, and I think it's been. I mean, you can explain it more, but my initial feeling when I was reading about it was, wow, like if I look at that in the morning, if I look at my daily card in the morning, it can help me orientate uh, my energy for yeah. that day. So that if I'm like, because I'm a feeler, right? If I'm feeling something, I might go remember that card. Okay. And now that I know some of the science of the card, I mean, there's a lot still 52 cards. There's a lot to get to know, but Oh, I can go, oh yeah, that's an energy I can tune into rather yeah. than try to feel like I have to push through something or struggle, or it could be a motivator. Oh, it's that type of card. Oh, it's a money card today. Yay. I'm going to, I'm going to look at my finances or I'm going to whatever. Yeah. yeah. Want to talk about the daily game? Yes. yes. So first of all, you know, we all have cards to play based on our birthdays, right? So what we've been talking about is all based on our own individual birthdays. Right. Um, the daily game is about uh, the cards that are in play every single day on a global level. So today's date is June 30th, and the cards of the day are King of Hearts, <laughs> King of yeah. Hearts, Two of Hearts. Yeah. And so it's not today. my birthday, it's not his birthday, it's not your birthday, right? But there's an energy pattern in play. And we are still affected by those energy patterns, whether we're aware of it or not, right? So to become aware of it and then to utilize that energy to your benefit, to navigate the day and go with the current of the energy as opposed to against it right. um, is, is tremendously helpful. It's just, um, you know, it, it's just an amazing, amazing tool to use for guidance. Yep. And you and you explain for right. each day, you give a little paragraph about what that card would mean. And so for those who who've never even, you know, oh, right. understood the science, right? Well, that's right. And um, the meaning of these cards. So if you were born on today, if let's say someone is born on June 30th, then their cards for their whole life are these two cards, the King of Hearts and the Two of Hearts, plus all the other cards in their life path. But those are the two primary ones. These cards are so powerful that they become the imprint for your whole life. That's how powerful they are. The rest of us are passing through these energies each day. So we experience for one day what is the pattern for these people for their whole life. One of the things that we really enjoy about playing the daily game is we actually get to understand the people in our life our friends family siblings like we're passing through a day where let's say it's my sister's birth card and personality card and we have the experience on that day we're like oh now we understand her now we know what makes her tick or oh. mother we're passing through the 
birth card and personality card of Vicky's mother that is for that day. Like, oh, wow, this is what she goes through in her whole life. We get to experience it on that day. So because of how powerful each day's energies are, that was the inspiration to create a daily game where we can play along each day in community, support each other, learn the cards, have a daily mantra, daily meditation, and a daily activation messaging, and then have end of day reflection questions where we can reflect on our day. What did we learn in the day? What did we experience? Maybe some challenges. How did we grow? So we created a whole platform because to us, this is, as we've said, this was game changing, pun intended, knowledge that we've experienced in our lives and we want to give it back. And we wanted to create a simple platform that people can play along and learn and grow every day. I love the word simple there because for me, this is what the science will, how it will um, help a lot of people when it is simplified. And yes. there's been a lot of people like say before us, a lot of the, the authors and so forth that have like downloaded this and, and, and it definitely connected it with astrology. And that can be pretty intense. And for those who love astrology, it's wonderful. Uh, not wonderful. Uh, um, extra tool to even understand yeah. astrology sure. i understand astrology better now than i did before through the cards so that's an interesting thing but the simplicity that you guys are creating i like that it's it's more for for anybody not yeah. just for absolutely people. and 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 to have a daily study because the card will repeat itself i mean yes. there are always king of hearts days not just june 30th there's other people who have birthdays on that have a king of hearts as their birthday um and so you get to have a sense of of uh intuitive knowledge about each card over time it's not a it's not a get get understand quick i um program or or knowledge i think this a is lifelong, really, it's a lifelong practice it is and and you know you've been with it for 15 plus years or 20 years and myself even the the books that i've ordered and got into Asia and, and started working. And I even brought them to Ecuador when I went to Ecuador in 2015. And somebody said, man, that adds a lot of weight to your life. <laughs> and I was just so loving the energy. And I was meeting all these new people. I'm like, I want to read their cards and so forth. Right. Yeah. So right. I, I may be a bit extreme, but it's, um, I like that it's, it's going to be simple and it's just going to add on. Yep. And you can take like, maybe five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night, if that's it. Or you can dive deeper, you can right. take more time, or you can also look at it throughout the day, take moments of like, oh, I'm just gonna do the meditation now, one minute meditation. Um, right. You know, I'm gonna go back and, oh, what was the daily key again? What am I supposed to do to activate this energy in myself? You know, like for, for the support, you know, keep going back to it, you know? And if you skip three days, that's good too. Like it's, there's no, you know, you, you kind of make your yeah. own, um, and then also there's a phenomenal community that we're building. So people can, if they choose, they can comment and answer questions in the comments. So they, there's a reflection questions. And if you want to share and be vulnerable, it's quite powerful to do that. I mean, to me personally, I feel like vulnerability is like the greatest healer. Like it's so powerful to share and express oneself. You know, that is just, you know, wow. So you can you can if you choose like share with everybody and so far that the support has been just like i got the chills right now like the, the, there's just all these cheerleaders in there of everybody like commenting back and then like being inspired by other people's comments so that part's super exciting for me because that really uh ignites me like i just get excited about connection and community so yeah. that's a big part of it as well it's it, it's supporting those of us, and there's many, many, many people that, that I don't say rely, but maybe it is rely on signs and rely on intuitions to guide them through the day. Cause we're working on a different level, a different frequency. And this is kind of building that frequency. It, yeah. For it all these manifestations to continue to, to happen and there, and not be so strange or whatever, but just to be a part of norm normalcy after a while, like synchronicities and so forth. And, and why not? I mean, that's what children live in. That's why I love being around them. They live in that kind of 
uh, of consciousness all the time. And I know it when I direct them with through theater and plays and the ideas they come up and the things they understand it's so immediate. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I do their card. I don't tell them their cards, but I know their cards. Yeah. So it's, oftentimes the kids will pick the characters that are so suited for the cards. It's amazing. That's it's fun. amazing. That's, great. That's amazing. I really love what you're saying there because that is part of the larger vision is that by all of us together in community and growing it and growing it and growing it, playing along each day, tuning into the underlying energy frequencies, we create a collective resonance and a collective coherence that sends a ripple effect of that coherence throughout our world. And we create more unity, more coherence, more synchronicity for all of us. We help to elevate humanity in this way. And that's the bigger vision is that as we all join in together and tune in, then we create more attunement for all of humanity. Yeah. Wow, that feels good. Amen <laughs> to that. that yeah. So, so thank you again. We're so appreciative of you and connecting with you and that you love these cards as much as we do and you want to share it as well. Um, yeah. We think that this is going to be, for all of us, a stepping stone for humanity, that this ancient knowledge has come back to us all now it was hidden in plain sight and it's come back to us now as a stepping stone as a tool that we can all use to elevate yeah. our lives yeah i love it and I, I i mean i was a we were big card players as a family us too yeah and i always loved the game of hearts <laughs> <laughs> that's so good and, and it's so funny when you see that it actually uh, there's something behind it you know it's 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 very very ancient and that part is was really attracted to me when I found that part because I love to go deep in my in my exploration of my own spirituality and uh, yeah so it yet it's light because it's playful oh, yes it is I like how you said that wonderful yeah. well I look forward to finding the winner of the the live read we can do. And I guess they might have to be somebody local. I don't know. We could put them on a Zoom. They could be in the Zoom in the room. And, yeah. yeah. That sounds great. I, I like you could make it into like kind of a lottery and you can pick yeah. one. <laughs> See who would like to um, be on that call. Because it's pretty special because you come at, come at from a diamond point of view, two hearts. And They're getting all three of us to give them a reading at once. That's magic. It's magic. Yeah. So well, I'll work on on finding that I'm, that person will find us. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And uh, we'll part, make that as part two. How's that sound? That Wonderful. sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Feather. And we'll look forward to our next podcast together. Sure. All right. Thank you so much, Feather. This thank is you. a pleasure. Until right. <laughs> next time. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.